Ladies, what God is looking for is a few good men. Men, what God is looking for is a few good men. And our text points out to us what a few good men look like and why God wants a few good men. Let's look and see what do a few good men look like. Well, God came to Gideon with a very strange request. Remember, he is outnumbered four to one. There are 32,000 that have joined his army, and there are 135,000 on the other side. And God comes to Gideon, and he says, listen, Gideon, you've got too many on your side. Why did God come to Gideon and tell him, I've got to chop your army down because there are too many on your side. I know you're outnumbered only four to one, but I said if one of you shall put a thousand to flight and two of you shall put ten thousand to flight. I know that. So you might just be able to do this thing if it's just four to one. And you might have a tendency to think that you're starting the business because of who you know. You might have a tendency to think that, that the council to help you to put your marriage back together. You might just have a tendency to think that you made it through school because you're so smart and you've got to understand something that everything you go through, the victory is yours, but the glory is mine. Look at somebody tell them the glory is God. That's why God said in Matthew 5, 13, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works, but glorify your Father which is in heaven. Have you ever paid attention to that? He didn't say let my light shine. He said let your light shine. I put something in you. There's a glow about you. There's something about your presence. There's a magnetism you have that I put in you that attract people to you. And whether you realize it or not, people are going to have a tendency to look at you and tell you what a good fella you are, what a great guy you are, what a great girl you are. You're so wonderful. You're so smart. You're so nice. And you're so kind. But baby, don't get the big head. You better throw your hands in heaven and say, thank you, Jesus, because you know what you used to be like. You know how you used to act. You know what your attitude was like. You know how you don't want to be bothered. You know your patience ain't that long. You know how you want to be by yourself. But when you're able to put up with it, when you're able to go through it, when you're able to do what you don't want to do, be nice when you don't want to be nice, that ain't you, baby. That's God working through you. Anybody glad about God? Somebody shall thank you, Jesus. And so God says, I've got to chop your army down. And so God tells Gideon, do something for me. I want you to utter a proclamation. Tell them, everybody that's scared can go back home. Are you with me? Matter of fact, he said, everybody feel for that afraid. You can go back home. Now understand, he's outnumbered 4 to 1, 32,000 soldiers are on his side. The word fearful has to deal with the emotional response. The word afraid has to deal with the physical, the physical operation of the body in response to that emotion. The word afraid means to tremble. And so God said, everybody on the inside, I can see your heart. If you're scared and you're trembling and you're afraid of what you're facing, you looked at what's coming against you. You looked at everything that can stop you and slow you and hinder you down and you are afraid. You can pack your stuff and go home. Are you with me? It's interesting, it's interesting, interesting that the Bible tells us that when Gideon said this, 22,000 pack up their stuff, loaded up their horses, and said, adios, see you later. I'm going back home. 22,000 went back home. Why did God send them back home? The first thing we learn is that God is looking for a few good men who are not afraid. Look at somebody next to you and tell them, don't be afraid. Why is God looking for men that are not afraid? First of all, God is looking for people that are not afraid. Not just men, but ladies. If you're at home, God doesn't want you to be filled for two. Why? Because it says something about your relationship with God. Are you with me? Mark chapter 12 verse 30 said thou shalt love 
the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Look at somebody tell them you got to love God. You got to love him with everything that you have. Are you with me? But you have to understand something. First John chapter 4, verse 18. Are you with me? But you've got to understand something about love. Love is a verb. It must be put into action. And so their fear said something about their relationship with God. Look at the verse. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. So that meant that there was something something wrong with their love relationship with God because if they love him with everything that they had they wouldn't care how many on the other side as long as God is with us we are well able to overcome anybody love my Jesus shout amen somebody why because God has not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love hell of a sound mind the interesting thing about 1 John 4, 18, in the Greek, the word translated fear is phobias, from which we get the word phobia. A phobia is a fear of something. Some people have a phobia of heights. They are scared of heights. And what happens? That kind of fear immobilizes you. That kind of fear stagnates you. That kind of fear paralyzes you. And God says when you give it a fear, it says something about your relationship with me. And if that ain't solid, baby, you'll be paralyzed when the enemy comes up against you. You'll be immobilized when you should be moving forward. Anybody want to move forward with God? Say amen, somebody. The second thing about fear is if you're given the fear and fear immobilizes you, paralyzes you, the next thing you'll do, you'll quit. Are you hearing me? Understand now, 22,000 pack up their bags and quit. Are you hearing me? They left 